It's 2016, and tattoos are just an ordinary part of uh, global fashion these days and personal adornment. Um, I, I'm imagining that quite a few of you in the audience today have tattoos. Maybe you could put your hands up if you have a tattoo of any kind. I just want to look around. I don't know, maybe 25%, something like that. And the latest statistics I've read on the United States is that 42% of Americans have tattoos. I just read an article today in the UK newspaper, The Telegraph, that uh, the increase in number of new tattoos for people, or percentages of people bearing tattoos globally, will continue to increase and won't peak. They say peak tattoo year will be reached in 2025. But it wasn't always that way. Uh, they weren't always that common, uh, unless you go far back say 500 years ago in every major culture in the world, whether in Europe, Africa, Siberia, the Polynesian Islands, t tattoos were a part of everyday life and they meant something pretty serious. But s about 60 years ago, they were considered largely the domain of sailors, circus performers, and gangsters. What these three groups had in common at that point would have been a perception that the, their professions were somewhat at the fringe of society and they were somewhat dangerous, being out at sea for long periods of time, um, performing circus acts, acrobatics, and so on, and then uh, the subculture of violence among the criminal underworld. And what else, the other thing they had in common was a lot of the symbols that they chose would have some kind of relationship to magic, even if it's just totally symbolic, but there was this idea that either religion, as in the case of the cross here on this gangster's back, or royalty, some kind of connection with power would somehow protect them um, during those endeavors. But Thailand is one of the few places in the world where this, where an ancient spiritual tradition of tattooing still exists. The Chinese first wrote about Thai tribes living in northwestern Vietnam and southwestern China receiving tattoos, bearing tattoos for protection and for power 2,000 years ago. Uh, so there has been more or less an unbroken tradition among Thais ever since then, probably changing forms, going through many, many different designs, passing through different kinds of religion from animism to Hinduism and, and then Buddhism, bringing them all together. Nowadays, what we see, such as in the back of this monk at Wat Bang Tra. Uh, at one time, up to say 50, 60 years ago, virtually every male Thai villager would have tattoos on his body, probably a lot of tattoos, wearing them for protection when traveling or in the forest or working in the fields, um, or to gain some kind of favor from the spirits from other people or, from, or in, their, in their careers or in their farming or whatever. It was all part of the, a wellness system traditional Thai wellness system that included such things as Thai massage and herbal medicine. You would be prescribed a tattoo or a number of tattoos by a tattoo master who would listen to what your problems are, what you desired out of life, and give you the proper tattoos for that. It cut across all sectors of society in Thailand, including royalty. The Prince of Chumpon, who was the first admiral and is considered today the, uh, the father of the modern Thai navy, is said to have been tattooed on every part of his body except for his face and hands. In this photo, I notice his left hand is gloved. But with the um, influx of European influence in the late 19th and early 20th century, particularly that of Christian missionaries from Europe and America, uh, there was this set of Western mores that crept into Thai society that was saying that tattoos are somehow taboo that they are uh, heathen, they're not, they're not a proper way to conduct yourself. However, certain sectors of Thai society continued to avail themselves of the tradition, particularly people who believe themselves, again, to be in dangerous professions, such as taxi drivers, club bouncers, and in this case, a police homicide detective who told me that not only did the tattoos protect him from danger during his job, when he was doing his job, but they also helped him to solve uh, investigations. 
But most, a lot of times, you know, in polite society, genteel society, they, they thought, well, this isn't really for us. This is for, this is for the underworld. This is for the lower class people. We don't, we don't do this. But this all changed, started to change in 2003 when Hollywood actress Angelina Jolie visited Thailand and expressed an interest in the Thai tattoo tradition. She was, of course, already a connoisseur of tattoos and had all kinds of arcane ink designs on her body. And uh, she was a, a high-ranking Thai policeman who was in charge of his security recommended a particular master that could do the work for her. And that was Anjan Nu Gan Pai in Patum Thani. And she agreed, and he came down from his, his Samnak Sakyang, which is the consecrated space where you would normally perform this kind of work, and applied a tattoo to her left shoulder blade, the Hatao, the five rows, which everyone now is very familiar with, but at the time they were still pretty esoteric. And um, these, this particular tattoo gave her general good fortune, general protection. It's kind of an all-purpose tattoo. Each of the five lines has a purpose, but altogether they cover all of the main bases. And she must have been pretty happy with the results of the tattoo because she came back the following year in 2004 and had a larger tattoo done on her lower back. This design is one of a tiger looking back, looking over his shoulder. And when I asked Ajahn Nu about this, the meaning of this tattoo and the purpose of this tattoo, he said that it's to fend off enemies trying to stab you in the back, figuratively speaking. Um, it, coincidentally or not, around that same time, Jolie's career was doing very, very well. She had some large movies. And um, people here in Thailand that ordinarily would look down on this act started getting tattoos, especially people in the um, entertainment industry. A lot of celebrities and would-be celebrities started getting tattoos as well. But uh, so Thai started getting into it as well. Foreigners started coming. Uh, just to get tattoos, or some that were already here availed themselves of the tradition, are usually people in the arts and musicians, and maybe just people who are more risk takers. And it's, pretty, it's become very much more commonplace nowadays. Every, every design has a specific purpose. They fall into six general categories. The, um, some of them are pure geometry, such as this one. This is for protection. This is the diamond armor tattoo. It's for protection against danger against accidents to avoid calamity or car accidents or falling down and breaking a bone or whatever. They can be clustered on your body in different, in, in different parts of the body for different purposes. This, is, uh, this shows a pair of Hong Sa's mythical swan that's for uh, personal charisma. In the middle of the back is a eight directions bat hit uh, tattoo that protects one from danger coming from any direction. And along the bottom of his back is a Hanuman going into battle with a spear. This is for victory when you're facing uh, very difficult challenges. This is a smaller tattoo someone's had put on their forearm that brings metta mahaniyom, that is benevolent love or loving kindness and great personal favor. And this, this means evoking from other people, from the world at large. It also could be spirits. And so if you're afraid of ghosts, this would be a good one to have. Uh, it's also a favorite with vendors and merchants who think that will help bring them customers. It can be applied to other physical objects in the world besides one's own, one's own flesh, such as cloth. They call this payan. They apply a design to cloth. This one is for, it's called mahana. It's for great power. And it's supposed to be useful in advancing your profession, uh, commanding obedience from those who work for you, and, and for promotions. They can also be inscribed on the back of amulets. This is the, a small nut, which is a, a subcategory of the yantras that is uh, just for very specific purposes and is quite small, and this one's for wisdom. Some of the lineages, there are three major lineages in Thailand, which I won't go into because there's not really enough time, but one of the major li lineages is that of Wat Bang Pra, which some of you may have heard of, and they have an initiatory Tattoo they require all their disciples to get, and this is it here at the Gal Yat, the Nine Peaks. It represents the Nine Peaks of cosmological Mount Meru in, in uh, Hindu Buddhist mythology. And like the Hatao that Angelina Jolie got, it's uh, general all purpose good luck, good fortune, wealth, protection, power. Uh, when I 
first came to Thailand many, many years ago, I started seeing these here and there, and I'd ask people about them, and ask Thais who were wearing them about them. I'd say things like, I remember saying to a man in, in northeastern Thailand that the tattoo across his chest, he had a tiger across his chest, very muscular young man, Isan. I said, that's beautiful, that's beautiful work. And he, was, he looked at me kind of funny, and was like he didn't really understand the comment. And I said, it, yeah, it looks nice. He says, well, I didn't get it for that. It's for, it, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a tie on a boxer. And I, it's for protection and power in the ring. That was the first clue that these things meant something more than just looking cool and badass. But I didn't really think much more about it over the years until in 2010 I started doing this book. And I went for 18 months. I traveled around Thailand, Laos, and Cambodia. I interviewed uh, masters and disciples, trying to find out more about how this all works. And not only did I find out it's not about just beauty of the art itself, but also it's it's not even so much, the magic itself doesn't really come just from the tattoo. It's not just the ink pattern. I thought magic heck, tattoo, therefore you, you get magic, but it's a lot more than that. I'm going to show you a short excerpt from a video done by photographer Cedric Arnold. It may give you a visual impression of what other stuff is involved. <laughs> So uh, what is all this other activity going on around the, the giving of a tattoo? Well, it's, what it's about is transferring a certain power from the master to the disciple. In this case, the tattoo itself is just a matrix or portal through which the master plants the magic. Literally, blue sake, they say in Thai. This, is, um, this magic, you can refer to it as wee cha, also meaning an old Pali Sanskrit word meaning Knowledge, on the surface it means knowledge, but it really has the connotation of a cult, because it's knowledge that has power itself. It's a, it's a knowledge of the powers of the universe, so to speak. And it's handed down from master to apprentice, from master to disciple, and transferring the power through a tattoo. And there are manuscripts that are kept that keep the lore, all the different incantations and spells that are associated with the tattoo, as well as the designs themselves. This is the late Ajahn Ganthan from Near, from Sambatong, who uh, died just a year and a half ago, and he's showing off the uh, manuscripts that he got from his master, who would have received them from his master before. What I found out is that it's not only about the incantations, and it's not only about this, the, um, the, the design itself, but you also have to um, keep a moral code to keep the power in, so you have to follow rules, you have to be a good person. If you're a bad person and use the tattoos just for personal gain only, then the power leaks out. So in a sense, you have the body shield of tattoos, but protecting that is, is your moral, is your morality, your personal morality. And for me, this made everything, made Thai Buddhism make a lot more sense in my mind. I began to see that Thai Buddhism is fact, for, for Thai people, many Thai people, Buddhism is talismanic, that the morality of Buddhism actually protects them from danger in this world and helps them to achieve their goals. And I thought, I don't know, for me, it was a real revelation when, when I put this all together. So that's it. Thank you very much.